Good morning. It's Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and the Insegna Booksellers. And this is uh, lesson number 45, presentation, podcast 45, on la letteratura italiana. And this follows uh, my uh, presentations of Grammatica in uh, programs 1 to 20 and Pratica 21 to 40. But what it really means in practice that I do, you know, the focus is always on uh, pratica uh, with uh, looking at grammatica and then an extension uh, with letteratura italiana. Welcome to Curtis L. Torman. Thank you very much for coming on right on time. That means I've done it right this morning. <laughs> I've pressed the right uh, live button. So here we are. This morning is an interesting one uh, because we actually... Uh, I'm actually going to start with letteratura italiana, nel duecento. Il duecento, uh, that's what, uh, you know, the Italian literary people refer the the years between 1100 and 1199. I've never heard of the term cento, uh, meaning 1000 plus, you know, the year 1000 to uh, 1099. That's still part of the... Uh, the system of the Dark Ages, if you like. But from the, the Duecento, in Duecento, then things start to happen. Uh, obviously, the barbarian invasions of uh, Europe uh, had come to, uh, not to a halt, but th they, uh, there was a lot more understanding of um, the way the Romans did things and uh, the way other people further south lived. And therefore, those... Um, practices uh, then became almost, you know, slowly became European. Of course, with all the changes, but, you know, we're talking about in, gen in general terms. The Trecento is the year 1200 to 1299, and il Quattrocento is 1300 and 1399. And in il Trecento, il Trecento, Quattrocento, we have Dante Alighieri, we've got, um, we also got uh, Francesco Petrarca and Giovanni Boccaccio, which, and I will be talking about them as we move on. So, but I said to myself that I will always refer in this, uh, you know, in this literary uh, lessons to the way the Romans, uh, the, you know, lived during the Roman Empire. And with particular references to uh, to the cultural uh, literary traditions of those times. So, for example, today Ovid will I'll be you know reading something about the Metamorphosis, and then also Lovers Graffiti in <laughs> on Roman walls. <laughs> graffiti wasn't invented now; it's been there for thousands of years. And uh, the Romans made a good use of it. In fact, there is a bit of a difference between the way the Romans, you know, as a as a popular character is portrayed today, and the, the Neapolitan ones. Uh, people complain that the Romans are a bit rough under the edges. <laughs> uh, well, whereas the Napolitan, you know, they tr try to be a lot more diplomatic when dealing with each other or with other people who they don't know. So that's, uh, you know, it's a good reflection, and uh, you can do that too. Uh, today, we're going to concentrate on influssi stranieri e spunti originali nella letteratura italiana del 200. So, uh, you know, spunti stranieri, in other words, the effect that uh, people from outside of Italy, especially from France, had on, uh, on the development of Latin into Italian. In other words, the poetry that came from there, uh, those people began, uh, especially in the south of France, they began uh, to write in their own vulgus language, language of the people, way before the Italians. Uh, because in Italy, of course, the church was very, very strong and all the laws, uh, you know, both the church laws and, well, state laws, they, they were in Latin. Uh, then... Uh, so we'll look uh, at the e, e Provenzali uh, e la scuola siciliana under the Fred, Frederick II. 
Okay, so that's that's that. Then we're going to do some speak, parla, speak. Again, this today is Kantiam. Is the, also, uh, I, I said, I mentioned Ovid and his metamorphosis and uh, lover's graffiti. And, uh, of course, something from Gianni Rodari. I had to bring him in. Gianni Rodari is a wonderful uh, Italian author uh, of the 20th century. Uh, really and truly, well worth uh, reading. Uh, it's, it's, uh, he's known for his poetry for children, but really they apply to everybody. And then the canzoni, we'll do some, uh, uh, you know, a few canzoni, I'll throw the canzoni in, in the middle to, to break up uh, the presentations. So that's it. Now I need a drink and then we'll start. Here we go. In flussi stranieri e spunti originali nella letteratura italiana del 200, i provenzali. Nel secolo XII, quando il volgare ital italico non era ancora affiorato nella letteratura, forse perché in Italia la lingua latina persisteva più tenacemente che in altre regioni roman romaniche. That's what I mentioned before, the, you know, the Italians, uh, Latin uh, lasted a lot longer in Italy than in other parts of the empire. Nella Provenza e nella Francia settentrionale, i rispettivi volgari raggiunsero un notevole livello letterario. Here they already started writing in, in the local language. La poesia provenzale di quei tempi si ispirava all'ideale e ai costumi cavallereschi. So, uh, you know, you remember the... Uh, you know, those times, the, the, the cavalieri, you know, the, uh, the, feudal, the, the feudal system of where, they had, um, uh, where they had people, you know, uh, playing games for the people uh, with, on horses and, uh, and the, those long um, sticks. Uh, so, and also the idealism of women in general. La poesia provenzale di quei tempi si sprava l'ideale ad ai costumi cavallereschi ai quali era pure improntata la vita aristocratica di quelle corti. So, the aristocracy, you know, what we see in that today with the, the passing of Queen Elizabeth, uh, you know, television is full of the pageantry of the, of the monarchs. So, uh, welcome to Assunta Lombardi. The, the pageantry of uh, the monarchs come from the, these times, uh, you know, after Charlemagne and uh, uh, all of Europe, uh, you know, the castles were built and uh, the, the, the feudal system was put in place and the local lords were there uh, and they fought and against each other as well. Not only some, they traded, but they also protected their own uh, little counties. Uh, it's, uh, and it's been like that ever since, really. This protection of one's, you know, your home is your castle. I poeti erano detti trobes. Il termine italiano di trovatore derivò da trobador, forma provenzale dei casi obliqui. E componevano, secondo alcune norme formalistiche costituenti, l'arte de trobar, l'arte di trovare, cioè di poetare. To, to write poetry. Spesso non loro, ma dei jongleurs, joculatores in, uh, in, uh, in, in Latin, but we know them in Italian as giullari o menestrelli, people who sang in public. And, and they, you know, people heard the poetry, first of all, from the giullari or the menestrelli. You know, some of them had a little lute with them, uh, you know, like, you know, the precursor of our guitar. Ne recitavano le poesie accompagnando su, su qualche strumento. I trovatori musicavano essi medesimi i loro versi. So, the, the troubadours, they, uh, they made up, uh, they, they were very good uh, to make up uh, the poetry, the songs, on the spot, literally. Of course, they worked on it, they worked on it but... That's what they did. Poiché gli autori, the authors, 
quando erano di alta condizione sociale, mm? so, if one of the lords who could write and read wrote poetry, it wasn't good for them to be seen to be writing poetry. Too vulgar a, a situation. So they gave their work to the troubadours. I, trova I trovatori musicavano e si mettevano i loro versi, poiché gli autori, quando erano di alta condizione sociale, ritenevano indecoroso esibirsi come recitatori. La materia più comune di questa poesia era l'amore, love, non concepito come sentimento e passione, not seen as, you know, as a passionate thing, or, you know, the love the way we see it now, uh, a physical love, ma come adorazione, like adoration, e soggezione, uh, to be a little bit um, uh, very sort of, uh, very nice towards women in general. You, you had to, you know, you, you had to bow to them, respect them, etc. Quasi un omaggio feudale all'amata. So it's, it's like the Queen now, you know, Camilla and Prince Charles is supposed to, in, in public. Uh, but in those times, the religion came a lot harder on people who had second and third marriages, etc., etc che spesso era una castellana potente. Very often these women were traded uh, as uh, diplomatic um, uh, instruments to join in two counties, you know, more closely. Would, they would stop wars. So a good marriage uh, would also give the, the poor cousin, if you like, a chance to live better. E come vi era l'arte di trovare, vi era anche una sorta di codice erotico che prescriveva le leggi di quell'amore cortigiano, o come si diceva, del fino amor. So, along this side, then, there was also this, um, the, the code, the erotic code, which, of course, the, the people who wrote poetry from the, from the vulgus, uh, from the ordinary people, they could access that. You know, after all, if you don't have uh, physical love, you can't have kids. So... That had to come in. Poesia di testa, come fu giustamente definita, it was a poetry of the brain. Artificiosa e schematica, in a scheme and art, in a artificial made up sort of thing. E tanto per variare si cercava di rendere complicata e oscura. E so they made it also complicated and obscure. When you read it, you couldn't really understand, you know, poetare chiuso difficile, you know, trova cruz. Trovar cruz means poetare, chiuso, uh, closed poetry, difficult. And a lot of uh, authors love that. And especially the intelligence in our universities, they like poetry that's uh, obscure because then they can put their own spin on it. My poetry is not obscure at all, but it has deep meaning as well on a, on a, uh, you know, on a felt, uh, on the sentiment, felt sentiment. Oltre al motivo erotico nella poesia provenzale venivano trattati argomenti civili, politici, politici religiosi e morali. So they didn't just stop at um, uh, the Provenzali, also wrote about politics, religion, uh, civil life and uh, morals in general. Per lo più nella fortuna metrica del sirventese. So they used to write like uh, la, la forma metrica, you know, like in, in music. La poesia provenzale, dunque, se ha importanza per la filologia e per la storia del costume, ne ha poca o nessuna dal punto di vista dell'arte in quanto sincerità di ispirazione. So the sincere inspiration was not part of the Provenzale uh, literary, literary tradition. He uh, it was more about the history and the, cost, you know, the, the, the costume, the, the way the people lived with each other. Noi possiamo infatti immaginare che anche nei castelli feudali la vita non mancasse dei suoi tumulti e sconvolgimenti e tragedie passionali e non possiamo supporre che le dame di Provenza fossero, come nella poesia così, nella realtà, idole di marmorea castità e freddezza indifferenti ad ogni omaggio, senza personalità né fisica né morale, coniato sullo stesso noioso stampo. 
So in other words, when uh, one of the aristocrats uh, wrote about a dime, you know, that he loved, the understanding underneath it all was that he wanted fiscal, but his expression was always like, you know, you're looking at a Madonna. You look at the religious figure. But the, the women of those times, you know, they had children, they had lovers, but they couldn't be seen necessarily. So it was a bit strict. It was very strict in terms of uh, if you did anything outside of the normal and be seen, you had to do it in the, uh, in the background, in a room where nobody sees you. <laughs> and everything happens. Eppure, tra la numerosa schiera di quei rimatori cortesi si distinguono alcune solitarie voci potenti e originali. Amongst these were some original poets, really, legate a nomi famosi. Eh? Name, the, some of the names are Bertram Dalbornio, immortalato da Dante in un episodio dell'Inferno, canto Aitain. Arnaldo Danielo, Gerardo de Bornei, Geoffrey Brudel, più noto per la poesia di, del Carducci, Bernardo di Ventar, Ventadorn, e qualche altro. So there were some other well-known names of poets. Now, that's about the Provenzali, okay? Uh, so we get, now we go to La Scuola Siciliana. This was under Frederick II. Alcuni trovatori provenzali visitarono l'Italia fin dal secolo XII. So the, this... Uh, these people here, also some of these uh, troubadours, they visited Italy, of course, and they went uh, right down to the Sicilian court in Palermo. E tra questi abbiamo menzionato Rambaldo de Va di Vaqueras, uh, well, in capito, ma, ma fu nei primi decenni del secolo successivo che in seguito alle feroci e devastatrici persecuzioni contro gli albigesi, Parecchi altri trovatori abbandonarono la Provenza e presero dimora nell'Italia settentrionale. So some of these uh, people here were, uh, were persecuted. I think they could have been Jewish background or, you know, from another religion. They were very tough uh, in Provence, the, the southern part of France. Qui vi alcuni poeti nostri, emulando gli ospiti stranieri, presero ad imitarli nella loro stessa lingua, onde sono detti provenzaleggianti in lingua provenzale. So some of our Italian uh, poets then started to imitate them uh, by not concentrating their writing in Latin, but in the language of the people. Tra essi, tra essi merita particolare menzione uh, this one, Sordello da Goito, Sordello da Goito, celebrato in un episodio del Purgatorio Dantesco Canto VI. And I've already covered that in my Dante uh, reading of Purgatorio. In Canto VI, Sordello da Goito, Sordello is mentioned. Autore di un compianto in morte di Ser Blacas, prode cavaliere provenzale, del cui cuore egli invita a cibarsi i vili baroni e l'imperatore Federico II, e re e conti perché diventino generosi come lo scomparso. So this guy here was, became generous towards the normal people, and so they, you know, Sordello was a good example for the people in the courts and the, even the emperor to be a little bit more merciful towards their subjects. E conclude, conclude, Sdegno Sacramente, sappiamo che io li pregio tanto poco quanti essi pregiano me. So I don't appreciate them as, uh, you know, uh, as much as I appreciate them, you know, as they appreciate me. So in other words, if they don't appreciate me, I don't appreciate them. He stood up to them. It's pretty good for, uh, for the Dark Ages going into the Middle Ages. Ma presto un'altra scuola poetica, eh, ben più importante nei suoi effetti, si organizzò alla corte di Palermo intorno al geniale imperatore Federico II, gran chierico. Uh, clericus, uh, non, it's, a, uh, you know, it's an intelligent fellow. He was, he was an emperor, so he had power, and he used it also for, not just for, you know, to use... Uh, in battles, but also to promote the arts. Good one. And I've seen uh, something from the Vikings where towards the end of uh, 
the Viking, you know, the, the rough Viking era. Uh, they also became then part of the English and, you know, the arts. Alfred, uh, King Alfred was one of the, you know, great people there in England. And I've just uh, sort of followed this recently. It's good. I recommend you to watch uh, those Vikings uh, series on Netflix. Uh, unbelievable. And also, uh, then if you want to, you can look at Arthur's uh, resurrection there in the in the Ottoman Empire, in the old Sel Seljuk Empire, uh, in uh, Turkey, and uh, and to, you know the, the lands towards India. Now, ma presto un'altra scuola poetica ben più importante nei suoi effetti si organizzò alla corte di Palermo intorno al geniale imperatore Federico II, gran chierico, come la battezza Dante, protettore di poeti, artisti, filosofi e scienziati di ogni religione e paese. He didn't make any distinction. They're all people, as far as he was concerned. Good guy, Federico II, whether they were Christiani, Ebrei, Musulmani, fondatore dell'Università di Napoli. But the first university was, was actually founded uh, as a studio in Bologna. Fu della scuola siciliana, quantunque i rimatori provenissero da varie regioni d'Italia. So he attracted people to his court. Perché usarono un linguaggio a sfondo siculo rifuso con elementi presi dal latino, dal provenzale e da arci volgari. You know, because the, there were a lot of local languages, so they borrowed from everything. Un linguaggio dunque cortigiano e artificioso. Again, a courtesan and uh, artificioso, artificial language, made up. It's not really f true feelings of how you feel about uh, a certain person. It's just still that, that influence from the provenzale. E tale si presenta pure la loro poesia, la quale è imitazione di quella provenzale e ne riproduce il convenzionalismo e lo schematicismo. È un fastidioso teorizzare e sottilizzare intorno all'amore. It's like, you know, made up, it's not really very attractive. Oh, I had, I forgot my, uh, I actually have a cantico from these times, which I will read. I forgot it uh, downstairs, but uh, too late now. We'll do it next week. È un fastidioso teorizzare e sottilizzare intorno all'amore, del quale si dice, ma non si esprime la potenza e il tormento. Una canzone di Federico II comincia, poi chi ti piace, amore, che ero e da già trovare, uh, etc., etc. Ma dal seguito si accorgi, ci accorgiamo subito che questo amore è un arido pedagogo che gli suggerisce triti e gelidi en encomi ed epiteti alla donna fina, valente e sovrana. Now, the, the Italian here is a bit difficult, you know, suggerisce e gelidi encomi, you know, that's uh, when you praise somebody, ed epiteti, an epitaph relating to the, you know, the wonderfulness of women in general, like Madonna's. Valente, sovrana, you know, uh, il padrone secondo Dio, chi comanda è mia moglie, <laughs> that sort of thing, la quale rimane una figura astratta e convenzionale. It's not a real woman, but it's a, a made up woman of what you would like the woman to be. Ecco i nomi di alcuni di questi rimatori, and I've heard of them since I was a young man, some of them, Jacopo D'Alentini, Federico II, Enzo, Uh, figlio di questo, Odo e Guido delle Colonne, Pier delle Vigne, again, another one, segretario di Federico II e immortolato da Dante nel canto tredicesimo dell'Inferno. He did something wrong and I think he was excluded from court uh, and he paid a heavy price. Uh, but for whatever reason I, I don't have now. I can't remember. Rinaldo d'Aquino is another one. Giacomo, Giacomino Pugliese. Si deve tuttavia riconoscere che se la scuola siciliana non creò vera e grande poesia, ebbe notevoli meriti nel conferire al nascente volgare una prima sistemazione e dignità letteraria. So, he gave a first, uh, you know, it's like a precursor to Dante. So, there, was, there were examples of what you could do with the vulgus, the lingua volgare. So, let's not forget that Dante was primarily... Uh, a scholar in Latin.
and then he became the father of the Italian. When he went away from the Latin and he said, okay, I'm going to recognize the, the people and the languages that people speak. And that's where the Divine Comedy comes in. Se deve tuttavia riconoscere che se la scuola siciliana non creò vera e grande poesia, ebbe notevoli meriti nel conferire al nascente volgare una prima sistemazione e dignità letteraria e nell'aver rinnovato la canzone riscattandola dalla ingegnosa costruzione dei provenzali. So, it's a first uh, look at, because there were quite a few people there, so they wrote differently and they brought it in without saying, oh, don't worry about what they think, I'm going to write it the way I say. But if you wanted to be recognised, you still had to, you know, the culture around us always determines the way we, uh, we write. For example, my presence here in, in Melbourne of Italian background and having studied in Italy up to and finished the Scuola Media, Seconda Media, I, sh I should have done the third, Terza Media, and uh, some other of my friends have uh, had, had done the liceo. Uh, but we have uh, been affected uh, by uh, the fact that we live in uh, Melbourne, where English is spoken, so our Italian is clear, is more clear cut. Uh, it's very simplified, especially for me, because I've taught in secondary school. So I want to communicate uh, in that. Whereas in Italy, it's different. Uh, there's still some of, some of the people are still uh, have a language uh, that is not easily understood straight away. Just uh, look at you know look at the television when uh, the politicians speak. God, they go so fast. Apart from that, uh, they've got their own uh, regional. Uh, a regional way of saying things, etc. So you really have to be up there with language in order to understand them. So that's it for, for now. Uh, now we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens now. Yes. Well, that's, that's there. Speak, Paula, speak now. Okay. I'm so happy when uh, I did the first part. But I think th that was okay. Because I was looking for, you know, a book that explained these sort of things. And that's where having, if you're interested in Italian as a language, as a, as a culture, uh, even though you speak other languages, uh, it doesn't matter. You can learn the language. And in, in the older universities, they used to say, you didn't study a language in order to speak it. You studied a language in order to read it. So the reading part was, uh, what was um, came number one for centuries in universities. And that's why they studied Latin and ancient Greek. Who very, very, you know, a lot of people who studied Latin and ancient Greek, they thought they were... You know, uh, there were, uh, I met a couple, a few of them, uh, and they appeared to be arrogant in their own ways because they were above the people. You know, that's it's sort of they. You need humility when you uh, in these things uh, because not everyone has got the opportunity that you've given yourself by choice or by temperament. So therefore, it's important to remember that other people are just as good in things that, uh, you know, in other parts of life, which we all need as well. So thank you very much to, you know, uh, to people who want to recognise. But the reality is that I'm just doing what I'm doing here because I'm surrounded by books. I've got you now plays. You know, you need the facilities in order to do things. It doesn't matter what it is. And you always see, you know, the politicians, the lawyers, the judges, you know, always they love to be uh, photographed behind uh, the book, with books behind. Well, I must have to do that one of these days. <laughs> do it downstairs amongst the books. I haven't done it now. It's given me an idea. Maybe with the next lot of, um, uh, the next lot, uh, about teaching Italian and learning Italian, I might go and do some of these in front of those books and just to show you just uh, 
you know, how much there is here at Insenia and how fortunate I am to be able to access this information. Otherwise, you'd have to go to a, a library, etc., etc. Different when you, you know, you build up a little uh, a bookshelf at home and you enjoy it. Why not? Okay, cantiamo. Via, via, pia vi piace cantare, there's a mistake here, <laughs> via piace, vi piace cantare, ascoltiamo delle canzoni, non vi piace questa canzone, qual è la tua canzone preferita, è il cantante che ti piace di più, musica moderna o classica? So, do, do you like singing? Let's listen to some songs, don't you like the song, etc. Dov'è il registratore? Ecco la cassetta, ecco la videocassetta. Accendi il video registratore. This was, uh, now we just have to, all you gotta do now is uh, rather than registratore, uh, recorder, uh, you just use your iPhone. You can record yourself and then you can look back like I'm doing now. So this is old thinking. So, Dove l'iPhone? Ecco la cassetta, etc. This is the old-fashioned way. Accendi il video registratore. Switch on. Spegni tutte le luci. Again. Ripetete il ritornello. The chorus, repeat il ritornello. Pronti? Uno, due, tre, via! Indovinate chi canta. Vi do un'indicazione. I'll give you a clue. And I'll give you a clue very soon. Formiamo il nostro complesso, la nostra orchestra. Now I'm going to do, you know, there, I'm going to go to, I'm going to mix this one up. So you say, ripetete il ritornello, right? Pronti, uno, due, tre, via. Indovinate chi canta. Vi do un'indicazione. This is Domenico Modugno. In his, nel blu dipinto di blu, volare. Penso che un sogno così non ritorni mai più. Mi dipingevo le mani e la faccia di blu. Poi d'improvviso venivo dal vento rapito e incominciavo a volare nel cielo infinito. Volare, oh, oh cantare. Oh, 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 nel blu, dipinto di blu, felice di stare lassù. E volavo, volavo, felice, più in alto del sole ed ancora più su. Mentre il mondo pian piano spariva lontano laggiù. Una musica dolce suonava soltanto per me. Volare, oh, oh. Cantare, oh, 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 nel blu, dipinto di blu, felice di stare lassù, ma tutti i sogni nell'alba svaniscono perché quando tramonta la luna li porta con sé. Ma io continuo a sognare negli occhi tuoi belli che sono blu come un cielo tra punto di stelle. Volare, oh, cantare, oh, oh, nel blu, dipinto di blu, felice di stare là, qua giù, e continua a volare, felice più in alto del sole ed ancora più in su, mentre il mondo pian piano scompare negli occhi tuoi blu. La tua voce è una musica dolce che suona per me. Volare, oh, oh cantare, oh, 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 nel blu degli occhi tuoi blu. Felice di stare qua giù, nel blu, dipinto di blu. Felice di stare qua giù, nel blu, degli occhi tuoi blu. Felice di stare qua giù. Now, welcome to Antonio Danzo. I am going to now 
show you that this uh, this is the information you need in front of you if you want to sing. You cannot remember the words. I have difficulty, and to learn them it takes a long time. And this is also the cantiamo here from Speak by La Speak. So, if you are interested in Italian, then I'm going to do the rest of it. Okay, it's, you need the resources. I'm not saying it for anything. You need the resources. And th what, that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this, in, you know, that for people, it's hard. You know, people go to uh, dinner dances, this and that. Uh, you know, always per la pancia. Sometimes you've got to do it for your spirit, for, uh, for the, the intellect, you know. Don't worry about the money. And uh, these things then remain with you for years to come. You know, we're only here for a period of time, so there's much time to learn, really. I mean, so you must enjoy every day. In order to enjoy these things that I'm doing now, you've got to do exactly what I'm doing and uh, have a look. Uh, come to see me. Do these things here for yourself. And whilst you're, you're at it, if you don't speak English very well, well, the translation is here. Do you like the singing, let's listen to some songs. Don't you like? So in other words, the bilingualism there is accessible. It's not foreign. And that's what happened to Dante. Because he had Latin on one side, and then he had the Vulgus on the other side, the language of the people. So when he went out into the piazza, he, d he didn't speak Latin, except if it was a priest or a cardinal or somebody like that. Let me go on now with... Um, The rest of uh, Cantiano. Formiamo il nostro complesso, la nostra orchestra. Okay, so these are the, the, the instruments. Il pianoforte, il violino, il flauto, il clarinetto, la tromba, il corno, the horn, eh? il corno. La tromba is the trumpet. Il sassofono, saxophone. Il fagotto, eh, I bet you don't know what il fagotto is. It's the bassoon. Uh, can you imagine it? Bassoon? Where is it? La batteria, the drums, i piatti, il tamburello. I piatti are the symbols. You know, the ones you bang together. Uh, the symbols. Il tamburello is the tambourine. Il tamburo is the drum. Il contrabasso is the double bass. La maracassa. La maracassa. I don't know which one this, this is. The maracassa, I suppose the, the little ones that Spaniards use. Il triangolo, the triangle, l'armonica, the mouth organ, la chitarra, the guitar. Now you pick up both in Italian and in English. You pick up a few new ones. Qualcuno sa fischiettare, can you fischio? Fischio is a, a whistle. So fischiare, ma non fischiettare. I mean, I can... But I can... In other words, you do... Nel blu, deep into the blue, you know. So you do that, the song, fischiettare. Okay. Potete canticchiare, can you sing? Canticchiare, you're not a cantante, but canticchiare, you know, pretend to sing. Il registratore non funziona. Vai a chiamare la bibliotecaria. <laughs> Tom Padula doesn't press the, the icon on the iPhone. That's sort of, sort of thing. You can't. Sai come si accende? Sì, ecco l'interruttore, the switch. C'è un guasto. Bisogna aggiustarlo. So, th this is, again, you know, we, we have uh, these beautiful facilities that are readily available. All you have to do is come and spend money. <laughs> well, you know, I don't really... I can assure you, no one is breaking down my doors. But, you know, there are a lot of uh, bookshops, etc. And uh, if they are close to you, then go in there. But, you know, again, you, you, we, have to, uh, we have to learn to, uh, uh, to give resources where they are needed, whether it's for the mind, for the heart, you know, uh, La pancia, lo stomaco, takes almost everything. And the government, of course, you know, the various governments for, uh, for our infrastructures. Otherwise, we'd still be in the forests. 
So if you're going to live in a forest for a while, you'll appreciate what we have now here. Would I be able to do this in a forest? Of course not. Okay, so let's think about those people uh, in Australia who live in small, uh, isolated communities. What do they have around them? And what do we expect them to be? They're not. They can't. So let's go to now to Rome. These are the original writers on which the then the Italian writers have uh, have copied in a way, because I've got here a poem, a poem by Gianni Rodiano. Rodiano Cantiamo ho visto un prato. There is a song uh, of visto. It's a song that's based on this on this poem. I never thought I've just come across this now. Ho visto un prato verde, 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 coperto d'erba, verde, verde, verde. Sul prato c'era un albero verde, verde, verde. Sull'albero un nido verde, verde, verde. E nel nido un uccello verde, verde, verde. Ha fatto un uovo bianco, bianco, bianco. Ho visto un cielo azzurro, azzurro, azzurro. E sotto un mare, azzurro, azzurro, azzurro. Nel mare c'era una barca, azzurra, azzurra, azzurra. Sulla barca un berretto, azzurro, azzurro, azzurro. In testa a un marinaio, azzurro, azzurro, azzurro. Che alza una vela bianca, bianca, bianca. Ho visto un paese, bianco, bianco, bianco. Con tante case, bianco, bianco, bianche. In cima a un monte, bianco, bianco, bianco. E su e giù per la strada, bianca, bianca, bianca. Ci corre un bambino, bianco, 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 con un aquilone rosso, rosso, rosso. Uh, so this is, um, ho visto un paese. He must have gone to Greece, uh, Gianni Rodari. Okay, there is a un paese there uh, that's uh, bianco, bianco, all the houses are bianco, bianco, bianco. Okay, the title of Ovid's great poem, The Metamorphosis, is Greek for changes of form. In this highly original poem in 15 books, Ovid describes or alludes to a change in form of a god or a human being in every story. From the creation of the universe to the deification of Julius Caesar in 14 BC, before Christ. Deification, you know, we make saints now. The Pope makes saints. They used to do that in ancient Rome. A long time before the Christians arrived. It has been one of the most important sources of mythology for all writers since over the time. These stories have delighted readers for over 2,000 years. Here are four of these stories told briefly in English. Okay, so there are four stories here. The first one, what's the time? Oh, no, uh, I'll, I'll do a song and I'll, a story, a song and a story. And because I've done the poem, the next one will be Paese. Okay, so we'll do the first one. Bauchis and Philemon. Philemon. Bauchis and Philemon, an aid couple who did not have much in the way of worldly goods, welcomed Jupiter and Mercury, who were travelling on Earth disguised as mortals. Three wise kings, huh? One thousand homes had turned the gods away and would not grant them hospitality. But his pious couple prepared a meal for their guests with the very best that they had and shared everything with these strangers. The epitome of hospitality. In return, Jupiter granted they wish to die at the same moment, when their time had come by turning them into two trees growing from one trunk. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Huh? And we have that then, you know, that's a good story by Ovid. And this is uh, now the song, Paese. But this time I'll show it to you, all right? Again, if you come to see me, I can give you... If you, if you come to my uh, to my activities, you know, the choral improviser, I'll give you these things if you really want them, or you can look them up. And this is from Nicola Di Bari, YouTube. Great friend. La più bella cosa che la vita ci può dare E la gioventù ma piano piano se ne va Ai vent'anni ormai, cosa aspetti ancora? 
fai la tua valigia e giunta l'ora di partire. Come un grande amico che di colpo ti abbandona. Me ne sono andato per non ritornare più. Forse son cambiato o oh, la mia vita, ma sapessi come mi ritorno in mente insieme a lei. Paese dove si nasce, sei come il primo amore, non ti si può scordare. Paese, sono stato ingrato, lei non mangiava se non ero ritornato. Paese, lei non capiva che in fondo, in fondo, non si vive solo per amore, non lei... Non lo sa, paese mio, questa è la verità. Ringraziando il cielo, posso dire è andata bene. E quella valigia non me la ricordo più. Ora ho quasi tutto, ma se ci penso su, quello che mi manca resti sempre solo tu. Paese dove si nasce, sei come il primo amore, non ti si può scordare. Paese, son stato ingrato, lei non dormiva se non ero ritornato. Paese, lei non capiva che in fondo, in fondo, non si vive solo per amore. No, lei non lo sa, paese mio, questa è la verità. La, 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 la. Ok, good. Now, that was Paese. That was, um, it's an interesting poem, you know. Uh, and it says, Paese, lascia la tua valigia. Well, I was 15. I didn't leave my Paese. I was told to move <laughs> by my father from overseas. Uh, and my mother took me there. And uh, thanks to Flotta Laura, I got here. And when I go back to Montemurro now, somebody said to me, why don't you come back? And I said, what do I do in a paese that's got only two, uh, you know, uh, two main roads uh, going around? And also, told, it's a beautiful, pretty place. It's, you know, it's a wonderful place, Montemurro. Uh, but uh, can someone like me now retire there? Uh, I can't see myself ever doing anything like that because... You know, I left Montemurro, I then also had to leave Moliterno, and I came to Melbourne, the three M's. There you are, I'm here, in M country. Ecta eon, ecte on, ecte on. Ovid, among the Scythians, by Delacroix, well, anyway, there's a, uh, also some of the painters are inspired by uh, Ovid's metamorphosis. Also in theatre as well. Ecton and his friends had been hunting one morning with great success. At noon, since it was very hot, Ecton urged his friends to go home with their spoils and return the next morning. In a secret glade through which ran a sparkling stream, the goddess Diana used to bathe when she was tired of hunting. On this day, she had given her bow and arrows her robe and her sandals to her attendant, nymphs, let down her hair and stepped into the pool. Ecton, wandering through the unfamiliar woods, came upon the goddess as she was bathing. As he gazed awestruck at her, she splashed water into his face and said, Now you are free to tell anyone that you have, been, that you have seen me undressed, if you can. As she spoke, Ecton was changed into a spotted stag, with fear in his heart. He fled, but his own hand caught his scent and gave chase. He tried to cry out, I am your master, Ecton, but he no longer had a human voice. He was finally caught and his pack of hounds killed him. The goddess Diana had no pity for him until the hounds had torn his life out. Cruel Diana. She was so pretty. There you are. I'll read you some lovers' graffiti now as well. Romula ic cum staphylo moratur. This is a graffiti in Rome. Romula hang, hangs around here with staphylus. 
<laughs> restitutus multas sepe decepit puelas. Restitutus has often deceived many girls. Cool. Vibius restitutus hic solus dormivit et urbanam suam desidera. Vibius restitus slept here alone and longed for his urbana. Successus textor amat cauponia, cauponie ancillam, nomine iredem que quidem illum non curat. Sed ille rogat illa commiseretur scribit rivalis vale. Success, the weaver, is in love with the hostess's maid, Iris by name, who of course doesn't care about him. But he asks that she take him, take pity on him. His rival is writing this farewell. <laughs> so there, there's some of, uh, there are more, but I'll, I'll read you the next one. Niobe. Uh, no, I'm going to do a song first now. The next song that I had in mind was A Quick Commando Ia. You know, you've heard this singing. Repetition is important. And this was, uh, of course, uh, Giuliano Cinguetti and uh, also Rietta Bert sing it. A Quick Commando Ia. And other singers as well. Quelle stradelle che tu mi fai far, cara Rosina, cara Rosina, quelle stradelle che tu mi fai far, cara Rosina, le devi pagar. E qui comando io, e questa è casa mia, ogni di voglio sapere, ogni di voglio sapere, e qui comando io, e questa è casa mia, ogni di voglio sapere chi viene e chi va. Devi pagarle con sangue e dolor, finché la luna, finché la luna, devi pagarle con sangue e dolor, finché la luna la cambia i color. E qui comando io, e questa è casa mia, ogni di voglio sapere, ogni di voglio sapere, e qui comando io, e questa è casa mia, ogni di voglio sapere chi viene e chi va. Quando la luna la cambia i color, vieni che l'ora, vieni che l'ora. Quando la luna la cambia i colori, vieni che l'ora di fare l'amor. E qui comando io, e questa è casa mia. Ogni di voglio sapere, ogni di voglio sapere. E qui comando io, e questa è casa mia. Ogni di voglio sapere chi viene e chi va. E qui comando io, e questa è casa mia. Ogni di voglio sapere, ogni di voglio sapere. E qui comando io, e questa è casa mia. Ogni di voglio sapere chi viene e chi va. That's a lovely song, and there's a lot of repetition there, and you can, you know, use the words uh, when you for writing. This is all listening, speaking, reading. The writing has to come by you, uh, you know. Again, if you come here and you really want to learn Italian, I can direct you to do it, and I'm here to correct your work. If that's what you want as well, well you know, I'm here. I can be accessed, you know, books and services. But I can only do so much. At the moment, I'm doing Italian, uh, French and Italian at the University of the Third Age, starting from uh, uh, Term 4. Uh, I think my first lesson there will be on a Wednesday, uh, on the 5th of October. Uh, and people can, you know, if you're in the North Bowen area, Deep Dean area, Q area, you can come and join me in my classes. Join up. There are only so many people that can fit in a class. So we'll see. But as I said, it doesn't have to stop there because you, by learning my methods, you can then teach other people as well and then you'll learn even more. Okay. Let's go to the lover's graffiti. Quis quis amat valeat pereat qui nesit amare. Bis tanto pereat, quisquis amare vetat. 
Whoever is in, whoever's in love, may he succeed. Whoever's not, may he perish. Twice, twice may he perish. Whoever forbids me to love. Love is everything. See? From the Roman times and even before. Otherwise the Romans wouldn't be there. <laughs> A famous poem of Catullus. Odi et amo. Quare id faciam fortasse requiris nescio sed fieri sentio et excrucior. I love and I hate. Perhaps you ask why I do this. I do not know, but I feel it happening and I am tormented. If you love and hate, you can't get what you want. A uh, bit of jealousy there. Then Catullus is another one of the great Latin writers. You know, it's, you know, notice here. Amore is dormivit, dormire eh, in Italian. Solus, solo. All of these words, they come from Latin. Ancillam, that's nomine, nomine. Harelam que quidem milum curat, curare, no? Amat, amare, the verb, va, pere, pereat, pereat, perire, eh? Nescit amare, odi et amo. I love all the Iran and I hate. Oh, you should know that. Well, you know, there are a lot of words from Latin that are still in the Italian language. Niobe. Niobe, the daughter of Tantalus, refused to honor Latona, mother of Apollo and Diana, and insulted her by ridiculing the fact that Latona only had two children while she herself had 14. Wow. Niobe must have been quite a woman. Fourteen children. Seven boys and seven girls. This is one of the songs by no, Sedici, 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 Girls, Sedici Boys. That's another song of Claudio Villa. Uh, all these artists always borrow from these people. Latona was angry and asked her children, Apollo and Diana, to make Niobe pay for insulting her divinity. Immediately, Apollo and Diana went to th Thebes and with bow and arrow killed the seven sons of Niobe. Niobe's grief-stricken husband, Amphion, killed himself with a dagger. In spite of all this, Niobe still insisted that she had triumphed over Latona as she still had more children than the goddess. At once, as the daughters stood grieving for their brothers, they were killed one by one by the arrows of Apollo and Diana. Finally realizing the enormity of her crime, Niobe sat among the bodies of her children and slowly chained into stone. She was taken by a whirlwind to Maonia, her native land, where she became part of the rocky mountains from which a trickling stream of tears flows eternally. Isn't that beautiful, huh? A trickling stream from a mountain rather than the snow. A trickling stream of tears. It's winter time, I suppose you can cry too. And then it becomes spring. That's another one. And uh, what will I do here now? That's it. Oh, no, there's one more. No, no. What's the time? 11.22. Uh, I'll do Reginella. No. Now, let me talk about, let me talk about where I'm going with this. Where am I going with this? I'm um, actually uh, this week. I put up up to lesson thirty four uh, on YouTube as well. So if you go to YouTube, Tom Padula TV, or Tom Padula About, or Tom Padula, you should find. And also Insegna Media, Insegna is is also got um, uh, Insegna Books. I think it's also got it's on YouTube as well. And I saw a couple of the lessons there so if you become familiar with my lessons that'll give you an enormous amount of um, practice uh, without having to go to a class but if you come to a class there's the human factor you meet other people uh, you can form a little group going to a cafe a coffee shop and just read you know just have the materials with you you don't need a lot you know, I prepare each week and, you know, an hour here and there, but it's so pleasant to do it. And then it gives me great 
pleasure when Antonio Danzi says, bravo, Tom, thank you very much. You've been uh, a faithful uh, you know, follower of my work and uh, I thank you. And the same with Assunda Lombardi. I appreciate that very much. And also Curtis Old Tolman. Now, I appreciate it. You know why? Because you need other people to support your work. Uh, you can't be an island. You know, it's sort of for too long I did... I, I did my own theatre, this and that, but I really didn't mix all that much in over 20, you know, almost 30, 35 years. Since the early 80s, I sort of did what I had to do without, uh, you know, joining in groups, clubs, associations. I, in my 70s, also spent with clubs and associations and subcommittees here and there. And then all at once, bang. And then when Della died, I had to do something. Uh, it's too much to do. And I've done it. And then I'm enjoying the fruits of my labour. But uh, solitude is, uh, is not, you know, you need, you need other people. And also there's Angela Emil out there as well that comes on. Uh, fantastic. You know, I have a few people now, not many. But a lot of other people are watching uh, during the week. So we're getting around 80, 100, 120 people now. But I'm sure it'll grow. But it's not for me. It's really to push the, this knowledge. This is very important for the community as a whole and for the individuals and for second, third, fourth generations. It's important. Identity. Language is identity. Now, a lot of people are speaking about languages on television at the moment. And everyone's saying, you know, they want to speak. Uh, we've got, you know, uh, uh, indigenous languages here. Somebody says, well, you know, you have to teach the, you know, the local, the, the people who were born, uh, you know, uh, of indigenous parents uh, first. And, uh, you know, there are many languages in Australia. And which one is going to be the one? So you have to respect them all in their own places. No, you can have the local languages and we've got English as well and we can have an indigenous language, a couple of indigenous languages for to, to be taught officially. You know, you can do that, but you can't stop people from teaching anything that they want. Why not? You're passing on knowledge. That's what the storytellers have done. Okay. I think I'll do uh, the next one. The next one is called Reginella Campagnola. Or will I do Callisto first? I'll do Callisto first and then I'll do Reginella. This is the last one of the stories from uh, Metamorphosis by Ovid. And I mentioned Catullus as well. Callisto was a beautiful nymph of Arcadia. Uh, Arcadia is known as a sort of, it's a beautiful uh, tree area with grass and flowers, etc. And there's a, the Arcadian movement in, in, in Italian literature as well. Uh, and a follower of the goddess Diana. Uh, Diana is important. Uh, she's a, a, tough, uh, a, a tough goddess, very beautiful, but untouched, virginal. When Jupiter caught sight of her wandering in the woods, he desired her very much. He assumed the dress and form of the goddess Diana, and so was able to overcome her fear of men and then force her to his will. So this is Callista. Her shame and fear of her secret becoming known by Diana and the other nymphs made her flee away from them deeper into the woods. When her son Arcas was born, Juno was no longer able to contain her jealousy and took revenge by taking away Callista's human form and changing her into a huge black bear. <laughs> of course, you know, Juno was uh, Jupiter's wife. Very jealous. Because she still had human feelings, Callista fled both the hunters and the other bears and wandered lonely through the woods. Out hunting one day, Arcas, now 15 years old, happened upon his mother in the forest. As he was about to kill her with his spear, Jupiter stopped him, snatched them both and placed them in the sky as Ursa Major <laughs> and Ursa Minor. They are the constellations. 
Juno was even more angry at seeing Callista and Arca so honored and went straight to Thesis and Oceanus, gods of the sea, and asked them to bar these two from ever coming into the stream of ocean. The gods ascended and Ursa Major and Ursa Minor moved constantly around the pole, but they're never allowed to go below the horizon into the stream of ocean. So in other words, thank you, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. You are the, you know, what do we have here in the Southern Hemisphere? Huh? What, do, what do we have up in the sky that we're so proud of and it's not seen up in the Northern Hemisphere? Guess what? Yeah? Remember? No? No, I don't remember either. So I will tell you next time. Ursa Maggiore and Ursa Minore are seen in the Northern Hemisphere and in the Southern Hemisphere is what? Come on. You know, I'm going to leave it there. The brain doesn't necessarily want to disclose everything. <laughs> Reginella Campagnola. Okay. This is to Abruzzo, yeah? Abruzzo and Molise. Here we go. All'alba, all'alba quando spunta il sole, là nell'Abruzzo tutto d'or, le prosperose campagnole discendono le valli in fior. O campagnola bella, tu sei la reginella, negli occhi tuoi c'è il sole, c'è il colore delle viole, delle valli tutte in fior. Se canti la tua voce, è un'armonia di pace, che si diffonde e dice se vuoi vivere felice, devi vivere quassù. Quando è la festa, qua... Alla, quando è la festa del paesello, con la sua cesta se ne va, trotterellando l'asinello, la porta verso la città. O oh, campagnola bella, tu sei la reginella, negli occhi tuoi c'è il sole, c'è il colore delle viole, delle valli tutte in fior. Se canti la tua voce, è un'armonia di pace, che si diffonde e dice se vuoi vivere felice, devi vivere quassù. Ma poi la sera al tramontare con le sue amiche se ne va e tutta intende a raccontare quel che ha veduto là in città. O oh, campagnola bella, tu sei la reginella, negli occhi tuoi c'è il sole, c'è il colore delle viole, delle valli tutte in fior. Se canti la tua voce è un'armonia di pace che si diffonde e dice se vuoi vivere felice, devi vivere quassù. Now, welcome to Frank Mazzacca. I just sang Reginella Campagnola and uh, the chorus, I can, il ritornello, I remembered very well. And I remember the first part, l'alba quando blu, and then I lost it quando la festa, and so you can read it. So the stanze, when there is a, you know, a, a change in, in tone, in tune, that's why the musicians love the tunes. They, they want it all to be the same because it's difficult. Uh, to to change, but modern people do do change uh, tonalities, and uh, yeah, they do a good job too. So on that note, today's uh, lesson has been quite interesting for me, and I hope for you too. Uh, I've been able to mix things up uh, a little bit, giving uh, you know a variety of uh, of information, and I uh, hope you do. The best. Please don't forget to share my uh, th this podcast, these uh, lessons uh, from my Facebook page. You, my dear friends, okay? Uh, because you know the others come and go. Okay. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to finish, and that's it for today. <laughs>